What's going on, Cardinal Nation? Welcome back to Coca's Pizza here in Canfield. Another great week to talk some Canfield football. Always pleased to be joined by Mike Pavlansky, the head football coach for the Canfield Cardinals. Coach, what a football game that was on Friday night. It Dover's was. tough. I mean, they're a good opponent. You had a tough loss to Cheney, mm -hmm. but this time in overtime, you come out on the right side of the scoreboard. That was fun. It was, it was, a, it was a really good night for us, Richie. There was no doubt about that. Uh, the excitement at the end of the game when we won in overtime and um, the locker room, those are just special, special moments that, you know, you carry the rest of your life. And uh, proud of our guys, uh, the way they bounced back after, you know, a really tough loss against a very good Cheney team. And, you know, it took us a few days of practice to get our feet back underneath us. And uh, by Wednesday, we were ready to go again. And Thursday had a good workout. And, you know, went down there and just kept kept fighting. And uh, kids didn't give up. And that's a tremendous Dover team. And, you know, we were fortunate, uh, you know, at the end of the game that, um, you know, we were able to make a play with Brock. And the line did a great job of blocking and, uh, you know, come home with a win. We talked about it last week. Dover, Canfield, a non-conference rivalry that has formed over the last 10 years or so. Uh, you, as you have been under the helm uh, of the Canfield football uh, Cardinals. And, you know, when you look at that rivalry, every single year, it, it's a gritty matchup. There's no easy it, games. It certainly is. Uh, you know, right now they, uh, you know, they own the series right now after 10 years, uh, six to four. And those are the type of teams you want to play. Um, you know, teams that are, you're going to, you know, not beat every year. Um, teams are going to give you a competition and you end up five and five or maybe six and four on the other end of it. And, uh, you know, Dan if has got a great program, their division two this year, they are always a, a large division three or small division two team. So, you know, our guys are stepping up in competition and, uh, you know, there was two years there where they got the best of us. They beat us one year, 56, nothing. And the next year they beat us 53, 24. But other than that, 2009 was double overtime. The first year we ever played them, 2010, uh, we get beat 17, 13 at Dover. Um, come back in 2011, win 43, 42 on the last play of the game. Uh, and then the two blowouts. And then since we renewed the rivalry, um, 33, 31 Dover, 31, 10 us, you know, um, you know, this year it's, you know, it's an overtime game. And, yeah. um, you know, what, what, you know, it's just amazing um, what has happened. I mean, well, last year was what, 2021 was 14, 21-14. Yeah. Like yes. You know, we had a shot at the end of the game to get into the end zone and just didn't. But, uh, you know, Dan and I talked about that at the end of the game that, uh, you know, how fortunate we are to have somebody like them to uh, compete against yeah. every year. And it's only going to make both teams better. And, uh, you know, thank goodness we came out on the top. What a difficult stretch. I mean, you look mm -hmm. at Cheney, who's a great physical football team. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ursuline, who's another uh, great team in Division Three, Region Number 9. Mm -hmm. And then you got to flip the switch immediately and get ready for a Dover team. Talk about this past week's practice schedule, what it was like. Very physical against Cheney. Come out just a little bit behind at the end, and then you mentally got to reset, lock back in, and get fully prepared for a Dover yeah. Tornadoes team. Again, you know, our guys are disappointed in the outcome of the Cheney game, and it took us a couple of days. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Monday and Tuesday were, were slow in films. It was slow on the practice field. And like I said, by Wednesday, our guys, you know, came back uh, to where we normally see them and uh, had two really good days. But uh, playing two playoff teams in a row is only going to help you in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You know, that game, you know, qualified for us qualified us for the playoffs uh, we're guaranteed one home game and uh you know if we win two of the three then we're going to be guaranteed two home games in the playoffs if yeah. we win that first one uh you know so when you play playoff teams back to back you know that's only going to help you yeah. as you move on yeah it definitely helps with the computer points i know coaches don't get you know caught up in the computer yeah. points so much but it helps a lot from you know our perspective from the outside looking in mm -hmm. uh i wanted to ask you this we were talking about this before we started Dover on film, run heavy offense compared to what they've done in the past with that five wide setup. But they come out and, you know, they throw the ball. They spread <laughs> yep. it a little bit. Hey. So, you know, in game adjustments, what did you have to do on the fly to kind uh, of contain them? Our, our defensive guys did a tremendous job. Uh, you know, in, in the first quarter, they noticed uh, personnel for Dover coming on the field and, uh, you know, kind of gave us, you know, an indication of what they would be in either a run heavy offense or a pass heavy offense. And starting in that second quarter, uh, we were able to match their personnel and um, didn't do it in the first series because we were not prepared for that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as far as uh, the adjustments that Dan and his staff made and, you know, by the second quarter, um, you know, we were ready to go and they scored on the first play or first drive of the game. And then 
on the last drive of the game, mm -hmm. uh, they scored, but it took them four tries from the two yard line to get yeah. two yard line to get in. And you know, our guys just kept fighting. And um, you know, the overtime session uh, is something that most high school teams like us we practice every summer. You know, it's a competition drill, and uh, you know. That's the situation that played out, and our guys handled it really, really well. You talked about it. Dover gets in with, what, 15 <clears throat> seconds left yeah. in the fourth quarter, mm -hmm. kind of deflating. You know, they got all the momentum yep. going into overtime, and they get the football. As a head coach, you got to be so happy to see your squad bounce back in overtime, force that missed field goal, and then yeah. you get the football, and now the game is in the palm of your hands. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, you know, that last drive Dover had in the fourth quarter went nine minutes and eight, 19, nine minutes and 19 seconds. Jeez. Yeah. And, you know, going in the overtime now, you always want to go on defense first. So you know how many points you've got to get mm -hmm. uh, to continue the game or win the game. And, and so, you know, we told the captains, go out. If we win the toss, we're going to play defense. And, and after a long drive, nine minutes, 19 seconds, our defense went back on the field and stopped them. Yeah. Uh, which is a great feather in their cap, which says a lot about their conditioning. It says a lot about their mental toughness, their physicality. And then uh, when we got on offense, um, you know, we were able to, on that third play, you know, spring Brock on a quarterback sweep. Yeah, yeah. Bring it, bring us through that play a little bit. You know, yeah. unfortunately, YSN we yeah. weren't able to get the yeah. Dover because of you know some mm -hmm. other things outside of football. But uh, you know, Brock has that football. Right. He takes himself. You know, mm -hmm. the, the typical can't feel run off to the left side, and right. you know he makes a football play. Oh, he does. Hey, our guys blocking uh, did a tremendous job up front. The offensive line. We got into a different um, formation we haven't shown before, and uh, where it was. Uh, you know, a couple of tight ends, two fullbacks, Danny Inglis next to Brock on the left side. And, you know, basically the ball's on the right hash. All you want to do is, at the very least, get the ball in the middle of the field for uh, a game-winning field goal for, our, for Joel Mizak. The second thing you want to do, third down and four, you want to get the first down. And obviously we hit a home run and yeah. Brock got into the end zone. Yeah, I mean, his uh... – that that spin move he he made against yeah. that linebacker coming up was just mm -hmm. remarkable. Yeah. I mean, he was probably a yard short of that first down mm -hmm. marker. Uh, if you look at it, if that guy makes a tackle, but instead he he spins away. And he's able to reach into the end zone and score. And you know what was the locker room talk after that when he's uh, able to get across? Yeah, just so proud of our guys. Yeah, you know that uh, you know we talked about you know in, in life nothing is ever as bad as it seems, and nothing is ever as good as it seems. But somewhere in the middle, reality lies. And we talked about being a, a very disappointed, discouraged football team after the Cheney game. And then obviously now we're on a high after the Dover game. You know, we've got to make sure we try and stay even keel yeah. and find reality in the middle because reality is pretty good for us. We're, yeah. we're, you know, we're not a bad football team. No. We play well. And, uh, you know, so, you know, none of, again, the lesson was nothing's ever as bad as it seems. Nothing's ever as good as it seems. You know, find reality in the middle and you'll be just fine. So I know we've talked about a little bit. You never want to have a bye week. Right. You always want to compete uh, mm -hmm. weeks one through week 10 and then prepare yourself right. for the postseason. But, right. you know, some things out of your control, mm -hmm. out of the head coach's uh, hands and your entire right. coaching staff, unable to get a football game mm -hmm. this week. Um, so now you have that off week. Mm -hmm. There might be a little bit of some positives to that because oh. of after uh, two physical games, yeah. you, you get a really? little bit of a break. Six physical games. Yeah. You know, you look at our schedule. The, the Ohio teams, the five Ohio teams we've played, West Branch 5-1, and one, Bellevue 5-1, and one, yep. Poland 3-3, three and three, Cheney 5-1, and one, Dover 4-2, mm -hmm. they're all in the playoffs. Yeah. And what's even more impressive as far as our kids are concerned, what we're pressed with our kids, is that the only when, when the playoffs were eight teams, the only team not in right now is Poland. Yeah, that's so right. four of those five are already qualified for the playoffs. It was an eight-team playoff situation, yeah. let alone 16. And St. Thomas More, obviously, up in Canada, is going to be in the playoffs up there and probably yeah. do a lot of damage again. That was a good football team. Um, you know, we need to concentrate on us. We're getting healthy this week. we got some guys out of practice. Uh, we're concentrating a lot on the young guys, okay. the twos and the threes, getting them more reps than they ever have during a regular week because you just don't have enough yep. time. And, um, you know, we have a modified practice schedule this week. We practice Tuesday, Wednesday. We'll practice again Thursday, 90 minutes rather than two hours. Go 90 minutes, get mm -hmm. your work in, get out, and, you know, recover a little bit because yep. it, it has been a, a tremendous stretch of six weeks of playing very, very good football teams, you know, that our guys have taken on. How's this week changed for you at all? I, I know – uh, you're heavy in the film room looking mm -hmm. at opponents that you're about to play on Friday night. Right. Now that you don't have an opponent, what are yeah. some things that you focus on? Us. 
you know, you, you self-scout offensively, defensively, certain situations. What do you do against this formation? What plays do you run on first down, third and short? You know, you self-scout and, you know, you, you get better that way. And the other thing you get better at is we talk to our kids. We want to do – we have three goals this week for our team to get better. One is we've got to play lower as an offense and defensive unit, not just the line, but everybody's got to play a little bit lower than they have been playing. Uh, number two, we've got to work and correct some fundamental mistakes that we still have. And then number three, become a complete player. Um, a complete player means we know you're going to work hard on the field, but what are you doing in the weight room? What are you doing in the film when you study film? Are you getting enough rest? Are you eating properly? Okay, all those things come into being a complete player. So we could come out of this week, even though we're not playing Friday night, and we can achieve those three goals. We're a better football team going into the week of East. Well, we might have to take away those uh, bacon cheese fries and hot chips over there. Absolutely. We're talking about eating properly for these guys. Uh, we got three special Canfield Cardinals coming up next. Head coach Mike Pavlansky joins us again. Coach, we appreciate your time as always coming out here. Enjoy the week off. You deserve Will it, Will do, Richie. Thanks so much. All right, thank appreciate you. It.